Donny Munro grew up on the Isle of Skye and heard his language disappearing all around him. As a, a sort of three-year-old at home, I was living in a household with a Gaelic-speaking mother, a father who understood Gaelic but didn't speak it, um, and an older brother and sister who by that time had gone to school who were there for speaking English and had already started to refuse to speak Gaelic at home. What about your so, father, though? You said he understood it but wouldn't well, speak it. That's really interesting, and it's probably... If you look at a village like Portree here when I was growing up, 99% of the inhabitants would have been Gaelic speakers. And yet the language of engagement would not have been Gaelic language. And I think it was because all of the really important things, like your bankers and your lawyers and your accountants, would have been English speaking. And so the language shift happens very quickly. In the 70s, Donny had joined his friends Callum and Rory MacDonald in a band called Runrig. Like many young people at that time, they left Skye for the mainland. We started performing and we had no particular interest in, in Gaelic language. We were interested in what was happening in rock and pop culture from around the world. What governed the decision about whether you sang in English or Gaelic then? I was in Aberdeen and Callum and Rory were in Glasgow. And for some reason, that distance and that separation gave you a kind of new sense of the value of something. Then we started collectively working together on songs using Gaelic. <laughs> Some of the early material, particularly on albums like The Highland Connection, you know, there are, there are songs there that, that really look very critically at what our experience had been as young Gales, particularly with education. I mean, this, this song, it's a song called Fiche Priana, which means 20 years, and it reflects on the fact that it took 20 years of living to actually start to access anything like the truth about our own language and history. Race of As Runrig's success grew, so too did the pressure for more to be done to improve Gaelic education. By the end of the decade, Runrig had brought Gaelic to mainstream pop. And in 1991, they performed two sellout concerts at Edinburgh Castle. On one of those nights, they were joined on stage by the Gaelic poet Sorley MacLean. As I looked out, I suddenly had a sense of something very profound was being said there that night, in that here was Gaelic Scotland reasserting its position at the centre of Scotland's sense of itself, you know, Edinburgh Castle, right at the heart of Scotland. And I think for me that was a very, very profound moment. Yeah. 